And greetings for another fun day of Photoshop parties. Today is September 19th. Wow. The year is flying by. Today we're going to talk about some of the updates that just came out on Photoshop. Mostly talk about the AI stuff because that's most of the update was that. Everything that was in the beta version is now in Photoshop. And it's not perfect but i tell you what there's some cool stuff that goes with it so let's go ahead and see what happens and share screen go here get rid of that window bring it down here and can you see my my screen right now got an airplane on it yep okay cool so we got the right one i'm going to go into photoshop to to start and then actually go into the cloud. Um, and when I go into the cloud, if you're looking for your update and you get all these stupid notifications, go away. Let's go to all apps, updates. If you go to updates under all apps, right underneath there, up in the upper right hand corner, if you haven't already updated, you can go up to the upper right hand corner, click on check for updates. And it will say Photoshop version 25.0, which is Photoshop 2024. So for some reason, one of my Photoshops is missing, but that's okay. Um, what the? Close that out. Go away. Okay. Back in here. So all you do is go on, click update, and it'll update for you. When you update to version 25.0 or 2024, why they don't put the numbers together? We were talking about that before we started. Um, I don't know why the numbers don't match up, but they don't. When you do that, make sure you click and save the old version of Photoshop. You can always delete it later. But save it just in case. So when it says delete all old versions, don't delete the old versions. Keep them on board. So in case some, there's a glitch with 25, um, you're good to go. So you want to make sure you keep that. And there's also a box to check to say keep my preferences and all the other junk. Keep all that as well. And it will bring it right into Photoshop. You don't have to reload everything. Um, but just in case, you might want to back it up. Not that I've had a glitch with Photoshop in the past, but I have. So any questions on updating up here? Check for updates in the upper right-hand corner right up here. No. Okay. Good to go. Easy money. Let's go ahead and start with something. Let's just do something fun so I can show you. Um, I'm going to create a new document and... I'm going to select all, command A to select all. And down at the bottom, it has your contextual task bar. And with this, the task bar, every time you close Photoshop and went back into it, the task bar would reappear in a different location. It wouldn't lock itself in. Once you click on um, pin bar position, it now stays there. Photoshop remembers where, where it wants it. So if I say reset bar position and it moved it up there, and I'm going to drag it by the big dot there. And I want to put it over in the bottom right or bottom left for me. Um, pin bar position, it's now there forever until I tell it I want to move it elsewhere. So reset bar and bring it down to the bottom pin it and if i accidentally hit hide bar oops it's gone all you have to do is go up to window down to contextual taskbar and you're back in again so just that easy with that so the good thing is the update they did the taskbar is going to stay wherever you put it until you they you tell it not to so i'm going to click on generative fill and I guess I have to agree to that. I didn't have to earlier today. So what would I like to generate? Let's call it Photoshop Party. 
see if what it does, what it generates. And when I tried this earlier, it was just a total mess. And so, does that go up to the cloud to make what you're doing? Yeah. Wow. And you can see there's a hand in front of her face here and glitch. But there's no Photoshop involved. It just has Photoshop Party. So I'd have to put something in there to make it even different. So let's undo that, get rid of it, say goodbye. Command W, don't save. Go to bridge and let's do this guy here. Here you can see he's holding on to a worm, but I want to change that to a fish. So what I'm going to do is take my lasso tool, L for lasso, and I'm going to make the fish about this big. Generative fill. Um, any fishermen out there? What kind of fish would you like on there? Rainbow trout. Rainbow trout. Looks more like a lake, but we'll go with rainbow. Let's see what it does. Oh, you had to tell it it had to be a fish, right? I told it, well, just to make sure I typed in fish as well. There's a little fish, a little bit bigger fish. And basically, it's the size of what I asked it to do. So when I put the lasso up there, it made the fish that big. Um, let's change it from rainbow trout to shark. <laughs> Why not? It's only, my, it's only my great grandson. No big deal. Yeah. yeah, he'll love you for that. I bet he will. <laughs> that doesn't look like. Well, the tail looks like a shark. The top half doesn't. Not even close. Yeah. And getting there. Baby shark. But if you hit generate one more time, which is right here, just click on generate. It'll bring up three more images. And if you don't like some of the images, you can delete them. So they're not in there. I hear my computer spinning off to the right and spinning and spinning and spinning. Not a quick process. Not a quick process. Whoa. Good. So Michael, are these images that are being generated Phil, are they coming in the full size as the image that's being put into, or are they being a downsized image? They the biggest they will make is 1024 by 1024. So depending on the size of your image that you're working with, um, it may be a downsized image or it might be a little bit larger. Like this image is fairly large, so it's probably a downsized fish. But, I mean, yeah. So what you're pretty... saying is, is make the image smaller, and then once you get it all done the way you want, then upsize the image to fit it then. Yeah. And some of these are not even close to realistic, but. Yeah, I was going to say, that's got a few too many fins on it. <laughs> you think? <laughs> They're mutant fish in California. Yeah, no kidding. Um and what's happening is Adobe is taking them out of Adobe stock. The, the images are not like um, some of the other AI companies that are taking them off the internet and violating copyrights. These are out of Adobe stock. So you get what you get, but they're not violating your copyright, which is what Adobe says is happening. So Now, if you had a picture of a shark, could you have them put that one in? No, not yet. Oh, okay. But the rainbow trout's not too bad. A little off there. But not not bad. I mean, it's close. For him, he would love it having a picture of him holding a fish like that. Um, so that's how the contextual taskbar works. Um, let's go ahead and... Go back to full size, get rid of this guy, goodbye. 
and I'm going to lasso his hat. And just for fun, I'm going to click on generative fill and I'm going to click generate. I'm not going to type anything in there just to see what it does. It should, if everything goes right, take his hat off, but I'm not sure. It may not. And what you have to do is you have to play with this and figure, oh, it just took off the, the logo. So let's type blue. And words like grow, um, add, those don't work very well. And if you look at the generate, when it's generating, okay, that's almost blue. That's almost the kind of hats that he likes to wear. We'll do blue and red, just for fun. And then I'm gonna, if you look at the um, box up here, it gives you a tip every time you do it. So it's a different tip for each one. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, he's cool. He's got glasses now. So that didn't come out blue or red. But you can change things like that really easy. Um, that's the biggest thing right now. Um, and then having the tips up there, each tip, I don't know how many they have. I've seen, I've only seen it repeat a couple of times I've been playing with it. But it's pretty dang cool. Let's go to... to now, could you have changed his background too? Oh yeah. Let me do this one real quick. Um, my wife took a picture of me the other day while we we're out walking, and you can see that I've got a little bit of shadow there. So the newest tool that I use all the time now is the remove tool, which is in with your healing brush, etc. Where's my healing brush? Where are you at? History. Wow. Yeah. There it is. I couldn't find it for some reason. Anywhere, um, if you look here, I've got the spot healing brush, the healing brush, patch tool, content aware, and red eye tool. My remove tool, which is supposed to be in that box, when I did the update, said I'm not going to play. Oh. So if you have it missing, what you do is you go down to your three dots down at the bottom of your toolbar. Mine happens to be a banana. Um, you click on that and you go to edit toolbar. And at the bottom, probably of your extra tools, if you've taken tools out before, is the remove tool. Click and drag over to the side. Um, I'm going to put it in the healing brushes, but I'm going to put it at the top because I like it at the top being the first one. And now the remove tool is there. So click done and I get three dots back. But now my re remove, remove tool is there. And a lot of people, what they've been doing is going up and painting over the area that they want to remove. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to take it. And I'm going to lasso it. Oh. And let it run. Oh, that's why it wasn't working for me. So now it works so much faster and easier. You don't have to go in and paint everything out unless you, unless it's something very detailed you want to keep. And, and, oh. ta -da, all done. Okay, well, let's get rid of this ugly guy in the middle here, too. My wife doesn't know how to square up an image. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't take that one, so you can't blame it on me. Although I would have done the same thing. You can do generated fill, though, and make it all together. Yeah, all I'm doing is hit generate fill, and it took me out. I didn't tell it what to put in there. Um, I just said generate fill. And that's it. So it does everything automatically for you. So that's pretty dang cool. Yep. Yep. 
Don't hey, Michael. It. Sir. Yeah, um, this is Rich. I um, I was going to tell you that the last tip you gave us for getting that remove tool back was worth the price of admission for me. Because I did the update, it disappeared, and I was like, I guess it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only reason I knew how to do that is when I updated the last time when they put the remove tool in. Uh -huh. I'm watching all these videos going, I don't have that tool. I went through every single tool in my toolbar, and it wasn't there. And finally, I went over to the three dots. And, ah, we got it. Okay. Yeah. So, up to speed okay. now. And if anybody wants to show off and put a banana in their toolbar, what you do is you go to Edit Toolbar, and instead of clicking on Done, you hold the Shift and Command or Shift and Control Done, and it puts a toolbar in there, or it puts a toolbar, yeah, puts a banana in your toolbar. Huh. Just one of those weird things that gee whiz stuff for when you do classes. A lot of fun. This is my granddaughter. She was in, I believe, Ohio at an Airbnb and did a great picture, nice smile, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and go to my W tool. And I'm going to do quick selection. And I'm going to leave a little bit of her hair there. I'm going to hold the option key and undo it. Can everybody hear me okay? Because I'm getting some weird things on my computer saying internet's whacking out. So, Yeah, you're getting some weird feedback. Okay. I got some internet issues going on today for some reason. So I'm going to go to generative fill. And do we want Hawaiian paradise there or... Caribbean paradise. Just put Dwight's backyard, you know, Pike. You know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell Hawaiian, Dwight? Put palm trees. Palm trees? <laughs> okay. Let's see what it does. Oh, that's not bad. Let's come down here. Oh, it won't take it because it's on a different layer. Okay. That's one of the things I learned is it puts it on a new layer when it does it, when you do a generative fill. And if you try to make a selection out of that, it won't select unless it's on something like the trees up there. So here we'll just put uh, Sandy Beach. And this tip says, got feedback, report, ready to report your results to us so we can improve it. Okay. So now we've got the beach here and we've got the trees up there. And this would be before and after. And it added in some more of the um, hammock behind her. So that's that's interesting. Huh, okay, I didn't notice the first time it did it. It just looked kind of natural. And if you don't like what it did, you can go through the three images on the right, which I always forget to do. I always take the first one and say, oh, that looks good. But if you look on the, the properties panel, You've got three images, and if you don't like that, hit generate again. You can always add more words to it. And again, it comes up with a different tip. Try adding feathering, etc. So we got that one, that one, that one, that one. Well, it shouldn't be water in there because you got the trees up above. You know how those print jump. Print comp judges are. They're mean about that. They catch stuff like that. Can you use this for print comp? 
no. No, no, no. A thousand times no. I couldn't oh. hear what she said. She said, could you use it for print comp? <laughs> and that would be a thousand times no. These are not allowed in print comp. Um, I don't think you can use AI even in um, artist category. Am, am I right, Dennis or Dwight? That's correct as of right now. Okay. You shouldn't be able to. This should all be your own work, which you enter an artist. So anyway, that's the sandy beach with the tree in the background. Everything's cool. I like that. It came out to me fairly nice. It'd be nice enough for her to be happy. So that's what matters. Questions as we're going. Feel free to ask them. Sandra, you had a question before we started. Oh, yeah, because... My Photoshop, when I hit a JPEG image, it opens it up in Adobe Beta. And I went in, I did the properties, and it still opens it up in a, Adobe Beta. Are you Mac or PC? PC. Hmm, okay. Because um, here, if we go into Preferences. Yeah. Oh, there. I did Preferences from Windows. Okay. Go into Preferences from uh, Bridge, if you use Bridge. Uh-huh. And, like, this is, I have it set up. Adobe Photoshop 2024 for camera raw. You can do all of them like that. Yeah. Um, but like, okay. I don't do desktop color separation, DCS. So I just left it beta. I don't care. Beta took over everything when I loaded it. Epson camera raw. If I have somebody that has an Epson camera, then I'll change that. But I don't have any that I know of. Nikon. First thing I change because I'm a Nikon user. So my NEF file has to be uh, 2024. So if you go into bridge and you go command or control K, it'd be control K for you, which bring up your preferences. And that's under file type associations. And when 2024 loaded, it did not change them from 23 to 24. Yeah, mine all say 24. Huh. Okay. That's what, that's what Drew, it, none of them say beta here. None of them. Interesting. Because that's what I checked. And I said, well, it's got to be Windows. So I went into Windows. And Windows says the same thing. It's <laughs> supposed to be opening with, uh, actually, no, Windows says it opens with 23. Okay. So change the Windows to 24. It would, I can't find 24. When and I went, when I went to the windows, it shows me um, picture or something, and then it says uh, 23, and I said, well, I want 24, and it said other, other apps. I said, yes, I can't find it. Hmm. I'll keep on looking. It's got to come up. Yeah, it's got to. I can survive with it. It's just annoying because I don't want to be in beta. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to think of why I brought these in here. Oh, I remember this one. If you try to, let's say select object. So let's go ahead and do a select subject and a reminder for select subject. There's a drop down right next to the word select subject. I'm in the um, select object, object selection tool, object. Uh, they both say oh, quick selection, object selection and magic wand. Any of those tools, any selection tools, you'll bring up the select subject at the top. The drop down next to it, you have your choice of device, which is quicker, but you get a crappier result, or cloud, which will give you a more detailed result. So when you click on select subject, it takes a little bit longer for the cloud, but it will get you a much better selection, so you don't have to do any extra work. And there you go. If I did it the other way around, they would be leaving something out there and it'd drive me crazy. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to generative fill and I'm going to say um, crayon drawing. And it's going to look like garbage.
actually better than it has in the past. That would be how I would draw it when I was a kid. Not even close. Um, let's try pencil drawing. So you can get some interesting stuff going on here. Um, and just play around and enjoy. That doesn't look like a pencil drawing to me, but okay. <laughs> that looks like a pencil drawing. So Photoshop isn't exactly 100% um, there yet, but there's a lot of cool things that it can do. So I'm going to do something after it runs one more time. Avoid commands like remove, no, without. Okay. Interesting. More pencil. Um, that looks look more like a shark than a Mustang, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll go back to select subject again. And I'm going to command shift I, which is inverting. And you can see everything but the plane is selected. So I'm going to put in um, early sunset mountains clouds and go from there see what it does and da 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 da, -da. I love the wheels it added. Yeah, that didn't quite do well, did it? Okay. So you can see that it ain't perfect, but it's got some got some potentials. Let's see. We'll go to this one. This is too easy for it, but one of the things you can do, let's go to crop. And I hit clear up here so there's no cropping going on whatsoever. Hold my option key and pull the corner down and it'll pull all the way around. And down at the bottom, instead of generative fill, it now says generative expand. So I'm going to click on generative expand and then click generate. And the, the clue up there talks about doing multiple actions such as cropping and expanding and rotating all at the same time that you can do. So this is probably too, yeah, that was way too easy for it because there's nothing spectacular. So let's close that and pull one out that's a little bit harder. Go to photos. 23, Bloom Festival, Keepers, I want one that's a little bit challenging for it. No, no, no. Yeah, let's try this one. This looks like it'd be a challenge. And I'm already in the crop tool, so I'm going to hit the option or Alt key. What that does, it expands all the directions at the same time. Now, you can make a horizontal out of that too, right? You know what? You're right. Like this? And well, like this. yeah, kind of. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Like a panorama painting. Kind of thing. And up at the top, you can see it says generative expand. Something went wrong. Something went very wrong. Oh, 
Okay, it's not saying generative expand right here. That's what's going wrong. Hmm. It should should still generate, but it's not doing it. It's gonna be blank again. Yep. Oh no. Maybe not. And the pregnant pause while it runs. There you go. Yeah. So you've got before and after. But those those are ten twenty four by ten twenty four, aren't they? The panels. Um, the the side panels may not. This one's not too big, so it might. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. The difference between the two. For Facebook and making it look like you know what you're doing, nobody would know the difference. For pros, you zoom in and you go, oh, I see what you did. Yeah. And we got people standing here. We don't like them. So I'm going to go to Command Option Shift E, which puts everything together on one layer. Take my magic tool, circle them, say goodbye. You got half a person on the left side over here from where it expanded. We'll get rid of him in just a second. And this kid lost his head. I'll just paint that, paint that, paint that. Let's get rid of that too. Why not? Do it all at once. And then hit OK. Drop the crocodile in there and everybody's happy. Any other questions out there? Anything? Going once, going twice. OK. Almost got rid of that. And let's, after this runs, I'm going to put a crocodile in there just for fun. So take lasso. Generative fill. Crocodile in water. Do you have to put the modifier in water? No. Oh. I could have just put crocodile and I'd probably put it in there. If I wanted to, more specific I am, I think it runs a little bit better because say in the water. Okay, and I don't like the back end over here. No. So I'll just go up to the mask up there. B for brush. That's not the right brush. Soft round. And it's painting with green in there. Should be painting with black. There we go. Oh, he's way the heck over here. So we'll take this, click on there, use the move tool, V for move. And it didn't work because it took the green water and put it in with him. It mixed it in. So, so if I wanted a crocodile, I'd have to put him there. But he's in the water and it looked fairly, fairly reasonable. So and another thing that Photoshop is not doing now is preset syncs. So like when you go from your laptop to your desktop, desktop to your laptop, it would automatically sync everything by syncing your brushes, syncing everything you have on there to the other one, which didn't work well because on my laptop I have probably 15 sets of the same brushes from when it synced 
So now they're not doing that anymore. So if you're missing presets from one to the other, now you know why that's happening. They're not doing it. So go there, stop sharing. Anybody have any questions? No. That's cool stuff. It, it can. This is this is you're gonna put a change in some of the competition and people doing things. I and there are people I can guarantee you people are going to try doing this. I will bet on it. I bet they already are. Been using <clears throat> beta and sticking stuff in there. Yeah. So what was I seeing? Something about tokens or something? Was that for generative AI or something else? For what what were you seeing? With it well, they said they left they left the price of the the, the current plan, the photography, Lightroom, Photoshop bundle at ten bucks. But there was something about tokens and, and having to pay tokens to do certain things. Right. Yeah, they're gonna do or that. in high res things. I can't remember what exactly what it was about. I did not Sandra, see you remember that. seeing that. I saw that. They were yeah. gonna give you a depending on your plan, they were gonna give you a thousand credits. And every time you use something, they would deduct a credit. Hmm. You could buy more. I saw the same thing. You could buy more credits, like the generated fill and different right. things like that. And you and every time you use it, it you dipped into the bank. And then after, then if you use more of that, then you have to buy more back. Right. Oh. So you'd get that only for a month, and then it would be washed out. And the next month, you'd start again. So you okay. can't carry it over. Hmm. Okay. I was just looking at a program for called Alpaca, A L P A C A. Have you heard about that one? I've heard about it, but I know very little about it. it sounds it sounds like it, it it's a little bit different than what we're using now. You'll draw something and say you can make it a sketch, or you can make it a drawing, or you could have it rough, or you could. It, it looked really interesting, and it's free, evidently. A L Alpaca, alpaca. Okay. I have to try it. I just thought. I need to look into that. Yeah. Well, if somebody can find it for free, I know who can. That would be Sandra, the queen yes. of free. Queen of free. Queen of free. <laughs> cool. Any other questions out there? Well, just need time to play. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> 